Hi everyone and thank you for the opportunity of this video poster. My name is Mattia Conte, I am a PhD student at the University of Naples and I'm currently working in the complex system group led by Professor Mario Nicodemi. In this short video I'd like to briefly discuss our recent work in polymer physics to understand the mechanisms whereby uh, human chromosomes are folded in the nucleus of the cells. Uh, what we know today is that DNA is not just a linear sequence. To understand a bit more about how chromosomes work, we have to look at the way DNA is folded in 3D space, because this has been linked to a number of functional activities, as for instance the regulation of the genes. As you can see, all along the polymer chain, there are specific regions called genes that produce the proteins fundamental for the life of, of the cells. But people understood that there are also other sequences which are not genes and they could be also far away from, from a gene, for instance, a million bases away, for instance, and they are kind of regulators. Um, say the way the regulators control the gene is summarized in this simplified picture, where the idea is that the regulators engage in physical contacts with the gene and in this way they can activate the gene itself. So this means that the folding of chromosomes in 3D space determines which genes must be on and which instead are off. Um, this picture is only for one gene and few regulators, but we have 20,000 genes and thousands of regulators in our genome, so you can imagine how complex is the network of contacts. Uh, one of the questions arising from this could be, for instance, can we measure uh, the interactions and the contacts, for instance, between gene and regulators? The answer is yes, because uh, very recent technologies from molecular biology, molecular biology are providing quantitative information on those contacts. One of these techniques is called IC, and the output of a typical IC experiment is a square symmetric matrix as the one you see in the middle of the slide. This is the matrix of the contacts of a whole chromosome, in this case the chromosome 14 in human cells, and each entry of the matrix is a measure of the contact between two sides along the chromosome. As you can see by looking at the matrix, there are patterns of interactions across all the scales of the chromosome, for a smaller scale up to larger scales, and you can also see very long-ranging interactions. Uh, and also, if you uh, zoom in a sub-region of the chromosome, if you look at the, in a smaller region of the chromosome, you find that the matrix of the contacts is similar to a block matrix, because you can see that there are uh, regions that strongly interact with themselves and weaker with, uh, with the other. So the idea is that DNA is partitioned into a series of regions, a series of blocks, that biologists call TAD, technically. Uh, so nowadays we know in a quantitative way who is in contact with whom, and if you want in this map, in this contact matrix, is somehow encoded the information on the interactions between genes and the regulators. So overall the message I want to stress in, in this slide is that nowadays the data from molecular biologists are shaping a complex structure of our genome. And those are quantitative data, and there are a lot of open questions, if you want. Say, uh, one open question is the following. What are the molecular and the physical mechanisms underlying the formation of those ordered patterns of interactions? Uh, since DNA is a polymer and is a molecule, uh, the idea is that we can use polymer physics and the laws of physics to understand the mechanism guiding the self-organization of chromosomes. Uh, maybe we can start with the problem in its simplest form. I mean, how can two distal sites on a chromosome filament, for instance a regulator and its gene, interact one with the other? The basic scenario that we proposed some, year, some years ago is the typical take of a physicist, because if two distal uh, sites, two distal objects interact, then there must be a field of particles that is producing or mediating the interaction. Of course, this particle uh, is not a fundamental particle, but uh, it will be a molecular factor or a protein that can mediate and bridge site along, along the chromosome. We can investigate this basic biological scenario by using quantitative models from physics, from polymer physics, physics as for instance the strings and binders model or the SBS model that we um, developed. In this model, a, chrom a chromosome region, a chromosome filament, is represented as a polymer chain made of bits which cannot overlap one with the other. Technically speaking, this is a self-avoiding walk polymer because this is the standard of non-interacting polymers in physics. 
All along the polymer chain there are specific sites that are the binding sites of the model, the one in red, for the diffusing binders of this polymer system. And the idea is that everything in this model diffuses according to the fundamental equations of physics, for instance Brownian motion, and uh, uh, say it may happen during the dynamics that the binders can bridge cognate sites on the chain, thus folding the polymer and changing its structure. Now, what is known in physics is that this system cannot fold in any possible conformation, because the equilibrium state of this model just folds in a few conformational classes that correspond to the system thermodynamics phases. Uh, for instance, you can look at the phase diagram of this very simple model, where on the y uh, uh, axis you have the energy affinity of the binders uh, toward the polymer chain, and on the x axis you have the number, basically, of, of the binders. Uh, the idea, again, is pretty easy to understand, because in this very simple polymer model, as you can see, there are clearly only two major folding classes, and they correspond to precise conformations of the polymer. They are called the coil state and the globular state. The idea is that uh, if the number of the binders is too low, is below a given threshold line, then the binders do not uh, steadily manage to fold the polymer chain, which stays in a more open, random folded state that is called the coil state of the theory. Uh, by contrast, if you increase the number of the binders, there's a phase transition in the system, because there is a precise threshold above which the binders stably manage to fold the polymer into a more close compact state, which is called the globular face the globular state of the theory. Uh, so, uh, in this very simple polymer model, conformational changes of, of the polymer system can be sharply regulated in a switch-like manner and with no need of parameter fine-tuning, because the model undergoes a thermodynamics phase transition from a coil to a globular state. With these very basic ingredients, it's even trivial to imagine how you can explain the contact patterns arising from the data. Uh, indeed, you can consider, for instance, a basic variant of the model discussed before, where now you have along the polymer chain two different types of binding sites, say the red sites and the green sites. The idea is that the red binders can only bridge red sites of the chain as well as the green binders can only interact with the green sides of the chain. So if you switch on those specific homotypic interactions, the polymer will form in 3D space two distinct globules, and if in this system you map the contacts, you clearly will see uh, two uh, square blocks of interactions along the diagonal that visually resemble the contact domains that people commonly refer to as study in biology. Now, to cut short the long story, this mechanism to produce the contacts is called in polymer physics phase separation, polymer phase separation. So if we take this seriously, the contact domains that you see in the data can result from a physical mechanism of polymer phase separation. Uh, but I don't want to give the impression that this is just a theoretical speculation, because with this model we can explain, uh, say, the experiments with a good accuracy. In this slide you see on the top the contact matrix of a genomic region around a gene called FI4. This is a well-known gene and really important because mutations of this gene have been linked to congenital disorders and pathogenic phenotypes. Um, as you can see, the experimental contact matrix has complex patterns of interactions, which are uh, faithfully recapitulated also by our model. Of course, to explain the, the, the complex contacts in the experiment, we need in this case a bit more sophisticated polymer model, say a polymer model with more than two colors, of course, and uh, uh, we infer this polymer model by combining machine learning and polymer physics, uh, but I don't have now the time to go through all these details. What I want to stress uh, is that uh, with our tools and with our model, we can do much more than simply fit or explain the patterns of contacts in the experiment, because we can make predictions on the chromosome interactions that we can test against, say, new experiments. For instance, you can imagine to take uh, your polymer model, then you can implement a mutation on your polymer system. For instance, you can cut a specific region, so you can make a deletion, and then you can compute through only physics the contact matrix of the model, say, after the, um, the deletion. Of course, you can perform a real experiment in real cells carrying the same deletion, 
and then you can check whether the prediction of the model is consistent with the experiment and of course this will be a stringent test of the theory because there are no available fitting parameters i mean the theory will be simply confirmed or rejected to cut short a longer story uh, for instance we implemented the deletion around the ff4 gene that i discussed before and after this deletion the model predicted a, a new uh, as you can see cloud of interactions altering the uh, contacts between the genes and the regulators within this region this mm, see those new interactions that of course are not present in the case without the deletions were confirmed by in independent experiments and we also showed uh, that those new contacts were linked unfortunately to congenital disorders uh, uh, technically called brachydactyly which is a kind of limb malformation so the message is that we can use our tools and physics to predict the effects of pathogenic mutations on the 3d architecture of the chromosomes I don't have the time to discuss further results, but to give the sense of the state of the art in this field, in a recent paper that we published, we also tested the predictions of our model against recent high-resolution microscopy experiments that provided for the first time precise information on chromosome structure in single cells, I mean in single nuclei. Of course, if you're interested, I'd be really happy to further discuss this during the poster session. Uh, to conclude, as you saw in the previous slide, chromosome, chromosomes have a, a very complex 3D organization linked to functional activities as gene regulation. We can use polymer physics as the SPS models to explain the patterns of interactions emerging from the data. A key molecular mechanism underlying the formation of the contact patterns as envisaged by our model is polymer phase separation. And finally, we tested the predictive value of our tools uh, because our model can predict in silico how chromosome patterns change after a genomic mutation. And so this could facilitate in the future the identification of diseases linked to chromatin misfolding. Thank you again for this short video poster and see you at the conference.